Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back again sharing some uh, Simon Says Stamp products. This particular stamp set is called Shine On and it's from their newest release which was called Among the Stars. So it has all these cute little like hanging moon, hanging stars. And I'm going to use my um, grid paper which is also, it's a Simon Says Stamp, it comes in a big pack. And I'm just going to line them up right on my um, grid and then pick them up with my block and then I know that they're all straight and good to go. So I'm actually going to be working on two different backgrounds, working on Canson watercolor paper, and on both of them I'm going to be stamping in um, in intense. Oh, why did I want to say intense? I have no idea. Intense, <laughs> uh, intense black um, Simon Says Stamp ink, and it's because it's waterproof as well as Copic safe. So I've never used these stamps before, so I was just kind of prepping. You can see me stamping on a scrap sheet over there just to make sure I get good coverage. And then I didn't want the face on my son. So I'm just using a baby wipe to go ahead and wipe away her face. And then I'm going to stamp that down. I thought that my original intention with this card, I thought it would be super cute to kind of do it like a pictogram where you removed parts of the sentiment and replaced them with pictures. That was my original intent. And you can see to the left there, that's another background I'm working on. Uh, this is Liquid Misket by Grumbacher. And I'm going to put this over the images so that it protects those images from any of the watercolor I'm going to be doing. It's like a latex almost that just protects it. I have a paintbrush that's strictly devoted to this because it does get kind of goopy even though you clean it off. Because it is so liquid, you can also use this particular masking fluid. I can't speak for other masking fluids, but you can use it to kind of speckle it on your paper and it will still create... Um, those little masks but it'll be like in droplets which I thought would mimic stars. So here I'm using some Zig Clean Color Pens. I have the 36 pack and then I do have some little extras that I bought but all of the colors I'm using here are included in that 36 pack. And you can see this looks like my three-year-old son colored it. I'm really just scribbling on the cover color to dry paper. And then I'm going to go back in um, with a wet paintbrush and I like to work in groupings of the same color. So I did all the light blue, then all the pink, then all the purple. The reason that I choose to do this, and I am rinsing in between, very important. These put down a lot of color, um, so it's really easy to drag it away and into other colors, and that's why I do them like color by color, because otherwise you would just end up with one solid color, and there wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see the pink or the light blue. So make sure you rinse in between if that's the look you're going for. I'm going to dry it down. I prefer um, colors that are super vibrant. But I knew that I wanted to be able to um, still see the images and, and the writing that I was going to put down. So I concentrated the second level of color really just on the outside. I'm going to wet the middle so that it's already damp. And then that darker color will run into it. If I touched the, the water to the darker color first and then dragged it into the middle, like I talked about just a second ago, it would just drag all of that dark color and cover up the lighter areas which is not what I wanted. So once I have all of those just kind of blended, I don't mind hard and soft lines in my um, in my watercoloring. I'm going to add some little speckles, which is going to break up the, the coloring in the background. Um, I am going to blot off some of the water just where it was kind of pooling around there. Even though I tape mine down, I still have a tendency to get some areas that pool. So I just kind of blotted that up. I did both of the backgrounds in the same way. And then I'm just going in with a really slightly damp baby wipe and cleaning up the areas that are on top of that liquid frisket because you can smear it around when you're trying to remove it. Obviously, you see, I just do mine with my finger. And you can smear that color around if you're not careful. So I just kind of like to wipe it up. So now I'm going to go into stamping the sentiment. The full sentiment says, you are my sun, my moon, and all of my stars. And it is a compact sentiment, which I really, really loved. And I told you my original idea was to replace the words with the images. But guess what? When I masked it off, I didn't mask off the word sun, guys. I didn't. And then you'll see me after I stamp it. I'm like, oh, bummer. But it is what it is. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to roll with it. Instead of it being like the pictogram card, it's just going to be a, a cute card that has those, um, the sentiment just kind of... Um, what's the word that I'm looking for, like just supported by some images. 
So I'm just using a, a full sticky back post-it note to mask them off and I'm cleaning really well in between. You want to make sure that you do that otherwise you'll be stamping your sentiment twice. Uh, here I'm using a T-square ruler. I knew I didn't want those stars just dangling um, in space so I knew I was going to have to put a line there. So I'm using the T-square ruler to do that and then to just kind of tie it all in I'm going to add a line under each one of those sentiments connecting it to its complementary picture. This is just something that I thought that I needed to make like more of a cohesive card. And then we're going to move into the Copic coloring. I always start with my lightest and work out to my darkest. Um, I opted for warm grays, which is unusual for me. If you watch my channel, you know I usually stick with the cool grays. But I felt like the, um, the, the moon would just be warmer. I, I don't know why. I just felt like it would be. So while we are watching the Copic coloring, um, you saw that other background that I was working on. That's going to be a separate video. If you're watching on my blog, they'll be in the same post. If you are watching on my YouTube channel, um, I'll put a link in the description below. And the reason that they're two separate ones is because for the second one, I wanted, I'm really into hand lettering lately, and I wanted to combine the hand lettering with my stamping. So that if you're not into, I wanted to do them separately. So if you're not into hand lettering, like don't even waste your time. You no need to even watch it. Uh, if you are, then by all means check it out because you can totally combine the two. And I think that they work really nicely together. So uh, we're moving on to the sun. I picked out some yellows and some um, oranges to go ahead and fill that in. The face I had to leave on the moon because he is shaped that way. But I didn't really want the sun to have that um, to have that face. I just felt like it was kind of too busy. So I'm a I'm more of a simple girl, and I already had a busy background going on. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to just you know be really simple coloring, and then of course shimmer because I can't make a card without it. Uh, here I'm just going around and I'm making the edge the darkest. And the reason that I chose to do that was because I felt like it would generally when something is is super light, that's where your eye is drawn to. Your eye is drawn to the highlight. So I wanted the eye to be drawn to the center of the sun. So I'm just kind of building up those colors. I'm using a, a light flicking motion. I'm not being too terribly particular. I have a hard time directionally um, not moving my paper because I can't bring them in in a, in a good straight line uh, if I'm just coloring it from one direction. So I apologize for all the turning, but it's just something that I need to do that's necessary for me. If you don't need to do it, then don't do it. Here I wanted to color in the, um, the what do you even call those? The rays? the fl I don't know. They look like flares to me, but the rays of the sun. I wanted them to have some shading, but they're a very tiny area, and I wanted the area in between them to remain that pale yellow. So I opted to start with my darkest color first. If you have trouble coloring in small areas, I usually start with my lightest, go out to my darkest, darkest, back to my lightest. That's a lot of ink on a paper, and that's a lot of risk of bleeding outside of the lines. If you are concerned with that, if you have trouble having a light hand, you're still practicing, still learning, um, you don't need to do that many layers. You can still get a good blend without that many layers, so don't feel like you need to, because even in scenarios like this, I'm still, um, I was a little gun-shy about using, you know, that many layers of color, and I thought, well, it's a tiny area, I can get a good blend, I'll just start with my darkest. And it ended up turning out fine, and I was happy with the way that that looked. So, like I said, I wanted to keep the area in between them um, light, so it already is that light yellow. And then I just added um, some darker spots so that there would be some highlights around the sun. I used um, a mid-tone and then out. Um, I just used three colors because, again, it's a tiny area. And I'm going to use that same light yellow to kind of finish everything off. I'm going to use the same colors in my stars. Um, not all of them. I'm just going to use the, the Y00, the Y13, and the YR15 uh, because they're pretty tiny. I'm not going to need a ton of blending. And then also just to kind of mix it up, stars, as you know when you look at them, burn, some burn brighter than others. So some of them I left the pale yellow, some of them I added in the just the Y13, and some I added in all three colors. So it was just kind of like trying to mix it up um, and keep them looking, you know, different. You can, you know, color them all the same or not or whatever you want to do. 
Here, I always outline all of my images. If you watch my videos, you know this. Some of the letters, I felt like I didn't get a super good impression because I was stamping with just a black, and it is watercolor paper. I'm working on the rough side, so I didn't feel like it looked great. These journaling pens um, are Copic Safe. These ones are from EK Success. I've also used the um, Micron and the ones the, the Copic brands themselves, um, and they all work great, especially if you need to fill in some lettering. I got that T-square ruler back out to make those lines for the stars a little bit bolder, but I wanted them to be straight. And then after I was done doing that, I went ahead and outlined everything all together. I pulled out a mix of clear sequins, and these are three different sizes. And the reason why is because the way that this card flows um, from left to right to left I wanted something to draw the eye in the correct order. So when you look at it, like your eye automatically follows those sequins and just kind of finishes it off. To complete the card, I used Clear Wink of Stella um, on just the center of the sun, the moon, and then all of the stars. And then that completes the entire card. So if you would like to see the uh, hand lettering, you're more than welcome to check out the next video. If not, I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.